Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a repot of this poor, poor, poor Nepenthes. I believe it's a Nepenthes ventricosa. It tries, oh does it try for me. But, uh, <laughs> like probably some of you, not all of you, um, you have a hard time uh, keeping these guys happy. For one, you need to keep them constantly moist. And uh, that's really difficult for me. Uh, I try, but it doesn't work. Um, and they're grown in sphagnum moss, so, or this one is in sphagnum moss, I believe, uh, or peat moss, or something like that. You want to have, um, something that doesn't have a lot of nutritional value, so you, you stay with something kind of inert. So it likes, uh, likes moss, well, the sphagnum moss. So, anyway, it is trying, uh, I've, I've watered it, uh, recently, so it's forming pitchers now, uh, which is nice. But we've also got a lot of dead on here, as you can see. So I am going to transplant it from this uh, little pot that it's in. It's been in this pot for a number of years. And uh, I'm going to put it into this self-watering pot. It has the... I measured my sphagnum moss in there. Uh, so I know how much to use. But it has the self-watering thing in here. So I just need to make sure that it stays within the nice range. And that the plant should be happier. Should have done this long time ago. I know my watering style. I know that I'm a lazy, lazy waterer, and I know that I underwater. And usually, usually that's a good thing. But sometimes some plants don't like to go dry. So, and this one here, it's it's so tolerant. This particular one, uh, it gets crispy and and the leaves kind of shrivel up. And then I give it a drink, and it kind of unfurls and and looks nice again. Uh, this is old, and uh, I've done it for, for many years, and uh, it, it just, y you can tell, you can tell. So I, let's repot it, let's give it a new lease on life, hopefully. We'll see how the, it likes this, uh, this new pot, I think it will, I like it, uh, and it's easy to water. So it, it, the watering, I could probably do it once a month, perfect, right? Maybe not once a month, maybe every other week, I don't know. Depends. Summertime more often, wintertime less often. We'll see how it goes. So, for any of you that are not familiar with uh, with um, self-watering pots, so they have the reservoir, it's this whole thing, and then there's usually a dish that goes inside. You've got this little meter thing here with, uh, it tells you when you have water in it, the little gauge goes up and down. Um, so when it's full, the gauge is up to the top. When it's when it's empty, it's right down to the bottom. Uh, and then you have these little little um, tunnels. I'll call them. I don't know what they are. Little posts. They're um, you get the soil or the. In this case, it's going to be moss. I'm going to pack moss down into each one of those. Those are what's going to be in contact with the the water. The water is going to, you probably has a, have a reservoir of maybe, I don't know how much that is, an inch and a half of, of water sitting in the bottom, and it raises it up, uh, so the, the water is going to uh, touch the sphagnum moss down in the bottom, and it's going to wick up and, uh, and make sure that the, uh, the plant is evenly moist, or the pot is evenly moist. So it works really, really well. Uh, I, I use it for a few things. I have it also for some succulents. That's a little bit more tricky. You got to keep it on the dry side more often, but uh, maybe once every couple of months I fill it up and then I wait for it to go down to dry, dry again, and wait a month and then I water it really, really well. So this isn't about the succulents. This is about this Nepenthes. Likes to be moist all the time. I can't, I can't do that for it. So we're gonna try to make sure that it, it happens, one way or another. So first thing I'm gonna do is get some scissors <laughs> and uh, over on this camera as you can see there's all kinds of little dead bits so I'm just gonna take some time with my scissors and just trim off any of these dead leaves just want to clean it up the plant will look so much nicer without all this garbage around so I'll take a few minutes I'm just gonna clean up this plant it's as simple as just cutting off all of the dead leaves I should be doing this more often but uh, yeah, I, I haven't. And we'll come back in just a second when it's a little bit more cleaned up and we'll uh, we'll unpot it and then repot it. Okay, so I've cleaned it up pretty good. I've got a bunch of the dead stuff off. 
Now you can see some of the nice new pictures. Oh, look at this. Just going to trim off these old icky pictures. All the dry, crusty ones. Why didn't I see that a second ago? All right. So there we go. Now it's all in this pot. Oh, one of them was a good one. Yeah, well. Whatever, you can't win them all. <laughs> that little pitcher will not, uh, not be uh, opening up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to unpot this, uh, this Nepenthes. And let's just remove this uh, hook. Do, do, do. Come on. Get out of there. There we go. So this is going to get uh, taken out of its pot. It's been living in here for a really long time, so there's probably a lot of dead roots. I'm just going to break off anything that willingly comes out. Like I said, it's been in here for a really long time. The poor thing should have been repotted sooner. I'm not even tearing. This stuff is just coming off. I think uh, the plant has just been stressed out by getting uh, to be uh, the, for drying out too long. So that's why many of the roots probably are dead. Now I'm going to also... I wasn't able to get in there because... Because the soil, or sorry, the pot was in the way. There's a lot more dead leaves in here. Just gonna get in there, clean them up a little bit more. Doo -doo -doo. All right, this should be fine. Don't need to go too crazy. Just casually taking the soil off there. Now I'm just going to take this pile off of here, throw it in my compost, there we go. So there's that, we've got the plant all ready. Now we've got to do this, this pot. So like I said, I've got, I've got some sphagnum moss here, I measured out what I needed for this pot and I also um, used some orchid bark, I don't know why I put that in there, just to... I don't know, add something different, add a little bit of better air circulation. Why is the sun, the light changing <laughs> as I'm doing this? Anyway, so I've got it all, it's pre-moistened and I'm just going to grab a handful and I'm just going to poke it down in these holes. Remember we want the, uh, the holes to be filled with the moss so that it starts the wicking process. It'll wick up the the water and then the water will come up into the main part of the pot. Handy dandy. It's fantastic. Just gonna fluff this soil up here, or sorry, this moss up a little bit. Get a handful. Ooh, it's nice and warm. I used I used warm water for my uh, for the moss. It's a chilly day, so I'm going to pot it right up in the center. Actually, you know, I'm going to add more moss in here, and then I'll just... Because there's no real roots to, to play with. I'm just going to keep adding the moss in here. This might make it easier. If I put the moss in first, and then just push it, push it down in towards the plant. You'll see in a second. All right. I don't know that you're able to see the bark in there as I'm putting this in. Okay. So now, we're going to take this. We're just going to plunk it. See how I made a hole here? Just going to plunk it down in the hole. Make sure it's at the bottom. I'm just going to move the moss from the sides in. Make sure it's hugging the root system. I might need to actually use a little bit more moss. I thought that I had enough. Just gonna grab some more moss here. 
put it in the in the water. There we go. Just making sure it's picking up any of the moisture. There we go. Now I could probably take cuttings of uh, of this, but I'm not going to bother. Actually, maybe maybe this summer I might cut this one off and and try to root the cutting. What I was hoping to do is do some layering. I was hoping to to lay some of these stems along the the moss and hopefully get them to root in, like this one right here. Do you see this long stem right here by my finger? I'm going to plunk that down in the side of the pot and I'm just going to put some more moss some more moss just uh, touching it, kind of holding it down. I need to get a little bit more water. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Alright, so we want to get this moss right in this area so that it comes in contact with the uh, that little stem. You're not able to see it so much, but uh, I'm just making sure that it has contact. There was a little pitcher here starting. I'm just leaning that over the side of the pot so it doesn't get uh, start developing within the moss and rot away. I'm just filling up all of the little crevices with any moss that I forgot. And then that's it. Potting is done. It's that simple. So there was new growth starting in there as well. There's the new little uh, basil shoots. Uh, there's the one here, there's one over here, there's one right here, there's another one just uh, just by my finger as well. So this, hopefully this, this uh, planting will, um, since it will be moist more often, it will probably like it more and those new growths are going to start to really take off. Uh, Nepenthes in general, if you've ever grown them or if you haven't grown them, generally they like good light. Um, you'll find if they, they have too little light, they don't pitcher, but uh, if they have too much light, they go kind of a reddish color. So if, you're, if your pitcher plant is, is uh, like a really red color, you might want to move it into a slightly shadier spot. Um, and, uh, and you want it to be in a nice shade of yellowy green. Like this isn't a bad color right, right here. Uh, to most people, that would be an icky color. But for whatever reason, orchids and, and carnivorous plants, that icky yellowy green is, is actually what you're striving for. Um, if, it's, if it's a real beautiful, deep, rich green, then it's not, it's not enough light. So you'll know, your plant will tell you, again, the, the picturing will stop if it doesn't get enough light. Um, so yeah, I'm not an expert in carnivorous plants by any means, but this one, this one seems to like me, well... It wants to be here because it's not dead yet, uh, and I've had it for a number of years. So, uh, so yeah. Again, I just wanted to pot it up and uh, give it a new home, maybe a new lease on life. I uh, I keep it under the grow lights here, and it seems to do okay. It loves it going outside over the summertime. It uh, merely survives inside, um, surprisingly. So I will add water to this maybe later today, or I might wait for a week, let, let it dry down just a little bit. But again, I want it to stay moist, so why wouldn't I add water uh, to this? So I'll uh, make sure that this uh, little gauge reads max, and go from there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a repotting video. I hope that this uh, Nepenthes really appreciates this. I want to see it do well. I've got some more Nepenthes coming from Brad's Greenhouses. Uh, coming in the spring, so you'll see those and we'll pot those into to different pots and uh, maybe Brad will uh, let me know that I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs> anyway, as long as they survive, I don't really mind. So anyway, until next time you guys, happy growing.